Man, Did you fall in love? Come on. Did you fall in love last night? You went off somewhere? Vincent. Just tell me that. I'll, I'll settle for it. You know what I mean? I'll buy that. V Vincent. Give me all you got! Vincent. Give me all you got! Michael Mann's Heat can be termed as a cat and mouse chase film, but there is something more than what it seems. Not only are there two legendary actors, but Michael Mann has brought in some very common traits in both their characters who play against each other. This scene I am going to break down apparently has neither any movement of the characters nor any complex camera movement, which means that the whole scene depends on the actions of the characters and their dialogues. So how did Michael Mann do it? First, let's understand the characters. Vincent Hanna is a lieutenant detective in LAPD. Being a former Marine and divorced twice before, he has gained a heart for action, almost screwing up his third marriage. On the other hand, Neil McCauley is a former Marine but also a former convict. In the relationship department, he doesn't have much involvement until lately he gets acquainted with E.D. and things start getting serious. In the overall view, Vincent and Neil are just the same person on the opposite sides of the law. Now the scene in question is the only one where both the characters sit down and have a conversation with prior knowledge about each other. So here it goes. Seven years in Folsom, in the hole for three. McNeil before that. McNeil is tough as they say. The first thing Vincent does is imply two things in subtext. One, he knows about Neil's history and his background. Two, he uses his patronizing tone to question this and assess how Neil would react. Notice how the camera is fixed on Neil while Vincent is asking the question. McNeil is tough as they say. You looking to become a penologist? Neil senses this and reacts with a counter question mocking his interest in him. Similar to this scene where he meets E.D. for the first time. What kind of work you do? Lady, why are you so interested in what I read or what I do? You're looking to go back? You know, I chase down some crews, guys just looking to fuck up, get busted back. At you? After that, Vincent hits him directly, warning him while boasting about his experience in successfully tackling crews. You must have worked some dipshit crews. I worked all kinds. The reaction to this from Neil is a condescending statement where he establishes his superiority over the other, followed by a defensive offense statement from Vincent. Now Neil takes a pause and asks him this. You see me doing thrill seeker liquor store holdups with a born to lose tattoo on my chest? No, I do not. The subtext of which is revealed in this next sentence. Right. I am never going back. Then don't take down scores. This is where the dialogues become more direct. Vincent gives him a direct warning to stop his business, to which Neil indirectly rebuts. I do what I do best. I take scores. You do what you do best, trying to stop guys like me. Now comes the second part where the conversation is about to go on a personal level. So you never wanted a regular type life? The fuck is that? Barbecues and ball games? Yeah. This regular type life, that your life? Vincent starts talking about his life and blames people like Neil for the mess they create. I got a stepdaughter so fucked up because her real father's this large type asshole. I got a wife. We're passing each other on the downslope of a marriage, my third. Because I spend all my time chasing guys like you around the block. That's my life. And when it looks like he's going to talk more about it, he ends it with a smoke. To counter it, Neil mentions the principle he sticks to and uses it to ridicule his life. Guy told me one time, don't let yourself get attached to anything you are not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat around a corner. Now, if you're around me and you gotta move when I move, how do you expect to keep a, a marriage? Vincent has to show authority, but he accepts the truth at the same time. So he gets an idea. Very smartly, he decides to question Neil about his life, making him reveal his side. Well, that's an interesting point. 
What are you, a monk? I have a woman. What do you tell her? I tell her I'm a salesman. Now notice this. A 7 second pause where Vincent thinks about his next question, probably comparing his situation with Neil's, after which he counters him with his hypothetical and a very much possible situation. So then if you spot me coming around that corner, you're just going to walk out on this woman? Not say goodbye? That's the discipline. That's pretty vacant. No? Yeah, it is what it is. It's that or we both better go do something else, pal. Neil answers this without hesitation, which brings them to this pseudo-friendly moment. I don't know how to do anything else. Neither do I. I don't much want to either. Neither do I. The smile between the both indicates how well they have come to realize that their life is almost similar. Vincent now decides to emphasize his point in a clearer way by telling Neil about his dream. You know, I have this uh, recurring dream. I'm sitting at this big banquet table and all the victims of all the murders I ever worked are sitting at this table and they're staring at me with these black eyeballs because they got eight ball hemorrhages from the head wounds. And there they are, these big balloon people because I found them two weeks after they'd been under the bed. The neighbors reported the smell. And there they are, all of them just sitting there. What do they say? Nothing. No talk? No. Just, they don't have anything to say. See, we just look at each other. They look at me. And that's it. That's the dream. The dream is a metaphor where the victims are silently looking at him and counting on him for gestures. Hearing this, Neil counters his dream by telling his own dream, eventually showing his adamancy. I have one where I'm drowning. And I gotta wake myself up and stop breathing or I'll die in my sleep. You know what that's about? Yeah, having enough time. Enough time to do what you want to do. That's right. You doing it now? No, not yet. After the end of the dialogue, look at Vincent's expressions. As Neil looks up, Vincent is looking at him with full attention. He then looks the other way and comes back to make the final threat. You know, we're sitting here. You and I are like a couple of regular fellows. I mean, you do what you do, I do what I gotta do. And now that we've been face to face, if I'm there and I gotta put you away, I won't like it. But I'll tell you, if it's between you and some poor bastard whose wife you're gonna turn into a widow, brother, you are going down. Vincent indirectly tells Neil that he likes him, but in a sugar-coated way, uses his family as an excuse to firmly state his objective. There's a flip side to that coin. What if you do got me boxed in? Then I gotta put you down. Cause no matter what, you will not get in my way. We've been face to face, yeah. But I will not hesitate. Not for a second. And Neil does the same in a much harder way, but eventually emphasizes a liking for Vincent as well. Maybe that's the way it'll be. Or, who knows? Or well, maybe we'll never see each other again.
and the scene ends with both of them smiling at each other and waiting for action the whole conversation is not just mere exchange of threats warnings and bluntly ridiculing each other but it's about the supposed arc nemesis who apparently have a lot of things in common and develop a sense of appreciation for each other in total there were three camera angles from both sides with conventional moments towards the close ups and in order to establish the equal and opposite nature of these characters the composition of every shot is kept similar both the characters get acquainted with each other while trying to understand each other's psychology and become pseudo friends operating on either sides of the law either due to necessity or desire and that's how conversation should be the use of metaphors and subtext add to the value of the dialogues and make the conversation worth watching again and again